Good afternoon, everyone. It is ALR Silver and another season review. This is our third season review now of ALR Silver. And we start off uh, down under in Australia once again. Well, the second time in third seasons anyway. Um, we've got Gamer who is leading then. Um, he was starting off absolutely phenomenally like um, like he did back in season two. Remember where he uh, won the Brazilian Grand Prix and was fantastic in Abu Dhabi as well, wasn't he? Um, before the rain came. Um, we are just uh, watching um, the drivers on the opening lap there. Unfortunately, New Patel, the uh, dirt for former bronze champion on a bit of a um, dodgy start. I have got um, Alex alongside me for this uh, silver review. Hello, my good sir. Uh, how are you doing on this fine day? Yes, I'm here and I'm uh, looking forward to some great racing. Of course, we've seen um, some of these great highlights already this season, but uh, it's always nice to relive them, isn't it? And uh, yeah, obviously I haven't seen uh, Australia in a long time on this game in, uh, in ALR. It's been, uh, it's been about 23 weeks, hasn't it? So <laughs> a long time and uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, getting back into the action with silver. Uh, definitely I am as well. RDE I don't think will be though. It's unfortunately he just drove into the wall and his wheel fell off there. So um, <laughs> goodness gracious me. That is a strong wall there. Uh, we're just uh, watching Cirrus Mush and then of course he's, um, I think he finished third in the World Championship in Silver last season. So he was one of the favourites going into this uh, season. Um, who was you um, keeping your eye on um, in this World Championship winning se in this World Championship season in Silver? Uh, I, well, off the top of my head I'd have to say uh, Nigel. Um, you know, I know what he can do anyway, based on what he's done in uh, the previous seasons of ALR. Obviously, being the first first champion of ALR ever since it were, since it started, um, had a bit of a difficult time on the uh, on the previous game, um, previous seasons as well. So he's um, sort of bouncing back, and I think he's well. You will see later on, obviously, how he does overall. But I think this season has, has been a consistent season for him. He's done a good job, and even when results weren't going his way, he still managed to get a few points here and there that helped push him up the championship. I definitely agree with that. I think, and um, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of Nigel. I absolutely love his style, and of course, the history he's got in ALR as well. Really, um, really, it makes uh, it makes me just love the man even more. Uh, but um, uh, Nigel, yes, he is definitely my favourite going into this Grand Prix. He's in the mid pack at the moment, having a great old battle of himself and FIFA and F1 2019, who dives on the inside in the Haas car. So well, that was a lovely manoeuvre there uh, from um, uh, from F1 2019. Now um, here comes Gordo Baz in a Troy as well, and my word, then I got to say. Going into eleven and twelve, Alex, that wasn't gonna that wasn't gonna go well at all, was it? Unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, going side by side through, um, well, to be fair, going side by side through most corners in the, in any F1 uh, race is difficult. Um, through that chicane is uh, pretty much nigh on impossible. So, um, yeah, it's lucky that he didn't uh, didn't end up in a the wall there. To be fair for Troy, but um, at least he kept it going. Yeah, and no, I've got to say, I've been in that wall a few times, just watching Gamer and Curly. <laughs> and I must say, uh, Curly going into this event now, because um, over the course of the season, Curly was very much a Nicky Lauder-esque kind of driver. He was just fine-tuning that car at a few events there, where he was just bashing out the practice sessions left, right and centre, and really uh, tuned his car. And in Australia, you really felt that, um, that he was uh, very much cutting the mustard. Uh, unfortunately, though, I think Gamer at this time then, it was in such incredible form now. But uh, how important is it to um, practice for, a Grand Prix. I think we've we've seen it from uh, from Curly and a few others in in other leagues as well that it helps. Um, it will get you will get you more accustomed to the track, to the um, to the braking zones, to the track limits, that sort of thing. So when you get into the actual race, when you get into the qualifying as well, before you can just put it down and, and know exactly what you're going to be doing with the car and, and what sort of times you can aim for. Um, it gives you the confidence later on when you actually get into the session. Um, and it and it worked out for Curly. I think he was one of the ones who came up from bronze last season, uh, with part of the reshuffle. Um, and yeah, he just sort of took to silver like he was uh, like he was racing in it last season as well. It was it was just um, accustomed to him. So um, yeah, hats off to him for putting in the work and the effort. And it's um, it's well, the results have come with that as well. That's a very good point. I completely forgot that Curly uh, came up from bronze uh, towards the end of last season. Yeah, that's a very good point indeed. Um, he, he wasn't too happy with me when I called him a midfield driver, but um, he must. Be, but remember, he did come up from bronze to silver. I can't. I can't. I forgot about that. And um, completely lending. Look at Gordo. Um, this, uh, I got to say, um, Gordo, you were hearing me over the course of the season review of how much of a fan I am of Gordo. Um, I think that this season he's been my um, personal. Personally, he's been my driver of the season. Absolutely magnificent stuff. Indeed. Just watching Curly and Gamer, I got to say, I. 
think they had a bit of a beef between each other in this Australian Grand Prix. They couldn't leave each other alone. This was a fantastic race between these two. And we've had five laps to go in Australia. I remember um, after this race, I had to actually lie down because these two were just absolutely like tooth and nail at each other's throats. So right from the uh, right from the off, we're all the way through to the check flag. It's absolutely brilliant. 17. Barza leads the Grand Prix at the moment. Um, and um, I must say, though, that uh, from the, the starting positions to uh, how the race is uh, going on now, it just seems like qualifying is not important around here. Is that right? Um, I'd say it probably is, but because um, it's not the easiest track to overtake on round Australia, but um, there is opportunities to do it, of course, down the main DRS straight. But um, yeah, I'd say um, qualifying is quite important, but it didn't, it didn't, doesn't look like it in these highlights, does it? So <laughs> it certainly does up there. And um, um, FIFA Beefy finished that third day, getting his first podium of the season in the first race. Curly and Gamer there um, finished them. Um, well, finished first and second after starting on the front row. Um, we also got uh, Gordo, great drive from uh, 16th to 8th. Fair goodness me, half this uh, starting position, fantastic. So indeed, uh, Wilson there, who was uh, a very impressive. I think he was fifth in the World Championship last season in silver, wasn't he? Uh, so we was. Expecting him to be one of the uh, main um, main challenges for promotion into next season's uh, gold division. And you can see there it is. And um, as you were then from the Australian Resort said, and that's a very unusual name, Rembo as well, of course, that she changed her name halfway through the season. So that was, um, <laughs> I get so confused when people change their names. Unfortunately, race and point Alfred Marion Williams have not got off to a great start in silver. As we now jump in to the second race, which is actually at Vietnam, which is the third round of the season. Um, uh, unfortunately, this is going to be the last time that we're going to be um, well, featuring Vietnam in in uh, ALR and Silver anyway, is it is not going to be on the calendar. And unfortunately, it was never on the official Formula 1 calendar. It's not the most favourite of uh, circuits uh, amongst the drivers then. Uh, what about, uh, do you like this circuit, Alex? Um, i got to say, I quite enjoyed it because it was unique, but I wasn't, I wasn't a fan of it. Um, I don't mind it. It's a street circuit, so it's um, something that I'm a fan of anyway. But um, the more street circuits we have, the better. Um, so yeah, I'll take it. Um, I didn't mind racing around it, but... Um, I could see definitely see why some people didn't like it. Uh, it's not the uh, easiest track, especially the final sector, to uh, negotiate is it. So, uh, yeah, there's there's areas that it could improve. Um, like you said, it's not going to be on the calendar or hasn't been in the official calendar um, because of COVID and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's a shame that it didn't actually get a race around it just to see what it'd be like in real F1. But I think everybody who's um, who's raced around it in ALR, obviously gold, silver, uh, have done a great job. Um, it's uh, they've done a great job in terms of putting on a good show as well so it shows that uh, we don't need real f1 we've got um we've got 20 guys around here who uh, you know how to race and uh, they can do a great job on it anyway and um, actually, um, I, <laughs> I must say then that this race was a br I was, I would love to race around Vietnam um, for silver for the rest of the uh, 20 or so Grand Prix because this race was a clinic and um, absolutely incredible incredible skill performance as we're just watching Roscoe and Steve um, going uh, wheel to wheel down the uh, long back straight then which is not very much uh, straight is it? It's a bit of a kinky straight isn't it? Uh, Diashi there just getting um, passed by a Billet there who um, I think that uh, Billet um, was having I think this is his super sub um, a Appearance, wasn't it? And look how gloomy it's got then. As uh, I'm, I'm going into uh, the Vietnam uh, Grand Prix, I, I got to say, I'm not, I didn't know much about the uh, country dance. We're just watching Troy a and Gamer go head to head then. And I've got to say, this is kind of a, a preview of things to come. Um, this is a cracking battle. That's why I want to race here every week then with these two. This is brilliant. But uh, um, I was getting a bit surprised then to hear that there was a mention of rain on the horizon then. And you see those black clouds coming. Uh, um, Alex, how difficult is it to uh, focus your mind on the race then when you can see black? clouds incoming and you can hear jeff talking about rain in the in the for in the future well jeff always says it's um it's, it's going to be arriving in the next uh, five seconds or something and it usually takes another hour or so before it arrives so you don't have to worry about jeff saying anything but um <laughs> yeah i mean when, you, when you're in a race and and you know the conditions are going to be changing obviously you're aware of that at the beginning uh, before qualifying even starts you're aware of if you have a look at the um the weather etc you know that something's coming up in the race to be aware of as you've got a bit of a bit of a spinny spinny raising point there but um yeah so you know that something's coming up later on in the race so you can prepare that with the setup um obviously making it a bit more stable making it a bit more uh, making raising the height, making it a bit more rigid so that you can get down the track without um sort of bottoming out bottoming out in all the rain that's coming in a minute um but it's really about um just getting as much as you can out of the tires at the and getting on the right tires at the right time 
And that is the magical phrase which has been in F1 since the dawn of time, hasn't it? It'll be on the right tyres at the right time. F1 2019 gamer and Troy uh, once again locking horns at the front there. And look at this, goodness me, then. I've got to, oh my gosh, oh dear. Um, I've got to say, how um, how that uh, William survived that was beyond me. Um, I must say, um, in the, um, gosh, I think that Roscoe definitely strove for this car before he came to Vietnam, my word. A new potato then, uh, very much in the thick of the action as well. Um, going from Australia to Vietnam, they're both um, they're both street circuits, and so well, according to like an untrained man like myself, uh, it's it's the same track to me, or is that completely wrong? Is it completely different characteristics? I think this well, the, the Australian track obviously is it's more of a classic track. Obviously, this is a brand new track that we haven't had any F1 racing on before as well, so it is brand new in terms of drivers getting used to it. Uh, which makes a difference. Um, the walls are a lot closer around here. Obviously, there's not not much grass about in Vietnam compared to Australia. But um, you know, I think there are similarities. Obviously, the the the, the main sectors where the overtaking is done is uh, is completely different. But there's similarities in terms of some of the um, some of the corners towards the lot towards the final sector, etc. But I want to say something something about uh, Vietnam that's completely different. Again, like we, like we did touch on in Australia, is that the overtaking opportunities around here are much uh, much higher. Uh, we've got the massive long straight at the back, of course. Um, when the DRS is active, it's uh, pretty much an easy overtake, isn't it? But um, there's also two other DRS zones which can promote easy overtaking as well. So it's quite a lot easier to overtake around Vietnam. Um, so long as you've got the right setup and you can negotiate it um, without getting in those walls, um, you're on for a winner, I think. Oh, and uh, talking of uh, which, Ayrton was there very much meeting that sandwich there, wasn't he? A, um, a very coolly done there from Baz there to um, somehow get out of that unscathed there. Uh, getting very um, getting very tense down there, wasn't it? And we've just got F1 2019 and serious much Oh, gosh, there. As, um, oh, dear, oh, dear. Um, that didn't go too well, did it? Um, that wall jumps out at you, I must say. Um, the amount of times I've been in that wall on career mode is just nothing short of embarrassing, really. Troy comes into the pit set with just three laps to go. At this moment in time, I um, generally thought that this was it. There Gamer is going to win a uh, never Grand Prix um, under his belt then. But um, as we see, uh, Troy, they put on fresh intermediate tyres. They've been on the t intermediate tyres for 15 laps then. Um, would you think that they were just stretching it too long at this uh, stage then? Um, or was it? Or was this a um, perfect call? As you can see there, Troy, well, it is a perfect call, isn't it? On one more lap to go, and Troy's already up to the back then. Um, how would you as a driver be able to know that? Or was that just the, or was that just the feel of the car that Troy had at the time? I think it was just an expert call from Troy. He um, he had that feeling in the car that he and he had the time that he knew he could make up, um, and he calculated it, calculated it to perfection, really. And um, yeah, it was just an absolutely brilliant strategic call from uh, from the Renault driver, uh, which we have seen of, of him all season, really, as well in, in other races as well. So um, yeah, it really sort of is that that sort of thing. It was it was um, a one-off uh, sort of in this race, but. We came accustomed to it as Troy, who sort of progressed through the season um, and put in these sort of performances um, week on week. So, yeah, it, it was surprising at the time. I remember watching it live as well, thinking, oh, my God, he's, he's pit. He's, he's sort of throwing the win away here uh, with obviously Gamer and Steve carrying on. But um, no, it was absolutely masterclass from, uh, from Troy. He knew exactly what he was doing and, um, and did it to perfection. And what makes, oh gosh, there is that the two uh, rivals come to blows there, unfortunately. But what makes it even more impressive, and this was Troy's first ever Grand Prix win in ALR. Um, and wow, what a win it was as well. Uh, Gamer finished third, so um, he'd not been off the podium in any of the races so far. And we're just watching um, Ayrton and Bradfield really, um, <laughs> really like getting their old, uh, getting their old um, teeth into each other. Thank goodness me. Uh, as they come through the uh, final couple of bends. And I, I quite enjoyed that battle, actually, um, towards the end there. Ayrton did finish um, in 10th finish there. There is uh, Wilson then who, uh, decided to have a smash then to his uh, Vietnam Grand Prix and Troy that, that was his first Grand Prix win of his career in LR fantastic stuff indeed then after three rounds and Gamer had uh, two wins Troy had one win Steve there from 16th to second there and um, I must say uh, I, I must say I keep saying that qualifying is not important in silver goodness me Steve's just uh, underlined that again honestly. but of course it is important on a track like that I think the rain did very much throw a curveball into that Grand Prix as we're just taking a look there Gordo once again in the points um, Nigel who was both mine and Alex's champion 
championship favourite, only down in seventh for this moment there, so on a bit of a difficult um, start to his uh, silver campaign, New Potato um, on a much better time of it after a pretty disappointing race in uh, Australia, and we also got um, Curly having a nightmare Grand Prix um, down in the 18th position there, is it just, it wasn't his day, Curly, from uh, right from the get-go, so had some technical gremlins in qualifying, if I'm not very much mistaken, unfortunately, as uh, we now flick it to the drivers and the constructors, so Gamer has a massive 34 point lead so far, but that was uh, where Troy really elevated himself up in the second, and they didn't drop out of the top two for the remainder of the season, did he? Absolutely brilliant stuff indeed. In the bottom three, we um, have Roscoe, RDW, and Fran. Uh, Diashi also not getting off the points uh, just yet, either then, as uh, those uh, bottom drivers then uh, having a difficult start to their silver campaign. Mercedes are currently um, top of the tree, 18 points in front of the Renault team. Red Bull jumping up in the third position, and Red Bull on a very strong star uh, to silver, but um, racing points still at the bottom there. So we jump on to the Dutch Grand Prix and uh, round five. And this is another new track to F1 2020. And I'm looking, I'm, I'm glad to say it's actually on the calendar for next season as well, somewhere along the lines. And we don't know what the cameras do, uh, what the camera, what the calendar is doing yet. Uh, so, um, which for my point of view, I'm quite excited by. But uh, uh, talking about the uh, Dutch Grand Prix, um, uh, Alex, I must say, I love this circuit. It's absolutely fantastic. Are you a fan of this one? Um, I wasn't uh, to begin with, actually, but um, I was more a fan of Vietnam, which probably says something about me uh, being <laughs> wrong in the head. But um, <laughs> so, um, I've grown to like it. Yeah, I think um, the only the only issue I'd have with it is that it's difficult to overtake on, and um, it sort of means that qualifying is important, as we, we probably won't see in the end. The classifications will probably see that <laughs> somebody from P20s won the race. But um, um, yeah, it, it sort of puts more emphasis on qualifying, I think, and. Um, and just making sure that you can keep you keep the drivers behind, similar to sort of a Monaco race where you you need to uh, you can't really overtake because it's difficult to, even though we've got uh, some great overtaking going on in this race. But um, yeah, you need you need to focus on getting the quality right as well and getting the strategy right, as, of course, because uh, there, there was there was a strategy difference between uh, softs, mediums, hards all over all over the place. So it really varied across this track. Um, and of course, ERS was completely impossible to save around here. So um, it would um, pretty much run out after lap after five laps. So yeah, you'd be um, you'd be stuck with nothing to uh, to defend with if you uh, if you did. And we're just watching Troy coming into pits, going onto the hard tyres there. As a gamer is um, taking the lead in this Grand Prix so far, uh, you may notice a new name in the um, in the old classification there to the left hand side of the screen. It's TK, or um, well, we've sh we've shortened his name to TK anyway because I already um, I butcher a lot of people's names there. So luckily TK came to spare my blushes at the beginning of this one, but um, he becomes a major factor in at Silver later on in the season as well. I'm going to repeat this a lot, unfortunately. So sorry, folks, but uh, no, I repeat all the time. In the oh my gosh, there, oh gosh, there is. So Welsh Maldonado um, having a big old smash. <laughs> oh, God. I gotta say, um, she um, she's had a lot of a uh, she's had a smashing time in um, silver this season, hasn't she, Maldonado? She's had her peaks, but she's also had her troughs as well. Unfortunately, it's uh, how difficult is it? There is oh, we got another one as well. I'm having a problem there. Oh gosh, there it's um, getting all very messy, isn't it? Here, I'm just going back to Welsh Maldonado. She has her she's had her peaks. She's also had her trough as well. How difficult is it to um, how difficult is it to like get back on um, like form uh, when you're in a bit of a dip? Um, well, just on on her specifically, I think again coming up from bronze last from last season, same as Curly. Um, there's nothing to nothing to say. Her season has been a bad season. I think um, both of them have done a great job in terms of coming up and and putting getting some points, getting some good results, and uh, and consistently scoring good points as well. Right? It's not been one offs and everything like that. I think they've all done it. They've both done a great job, uh, as well as the other guys who came up as well. So. Um, yeah, I mean, like you said, it's it's been inconsistent in in uh, certain races. Um, for example, like this one, there was there was an incident that um, either one of them could have backed out and it would have kept them both in the race. But um, yeah, that sort of thing where maybe decision making wasn't uh, wasn't right at the time. But that sort of thing comes along as you as you do more league races. So it's just something that you'll you'll gain over time. But I think um, yeah, Welsh Maldonado. Um, Curly Red, I think it was Ayrton as well who came up. Um, I'm probably missing other people as well who moved up from bronze to silver at the beginning of the season. So they all they've all done a great job. I think well none of them got relegated apart from Ayrton. I don't think so. Um, it just shows how well uh, everybody did apart from Ayrton. Sorry. <laughs> 
And having said that, though, um, <laughs> Ayrton did have quite... I think that um, it's a very difficult question I asked to Ayrton at the end of the season. Was um, Of course, sir, he did have a Grand Prix win, didn't he, in the Italian Grand Prix, uh, which um, we may or may not cover later on then. But it's very difficult whether you'd rather have had a win there or rather have stayed up into silver. Uh, if I was Ayrton, I would rather have had a win, personally. But um, there you go. Um, we just got TK. He's um, had a bit of a trip there, hasn't he? But, um, yeah, but uh, don't worry about that, TK fans. You will see a bit of action uh, from him later on then. Unfortunately, the new potato is going the wrong way. New potato should have and could have won this race last season there, but it was the closest Grand Prix finish in ALR history up until uh, this season anyway. Um, but, um, between, um, I think it was Ghost in, uh, Ghost in um, New Potato right at the very end. Mm -hmm. then. Yeah, almost a dead heat. It was fantastic. Uh, Bradfield there going up into fifth edition as well. Diashi up into a very solid sixth position moment. Diashi, um, I'm a, another, I'm, gosh, I'm a fan of all 80 of our drivers, aren't I? But um, Diashi is another driver who I really rate quite highly. He had a very disappointing and start to the season and uh, unfortunately I was I think I was actually um, complimented him right at the very moment that he spun there and unfortunately that put pay to his um, put pay to uh, his uh, chance of getting racing point off the uh, off the bottom of the Constructors' Championship as they had an appalling start to the Constructors' World Championship. Gamer took a victory. I think that was his win number four or five. I think I think it was his fourth for the season, if I'm not very much mistaken. Um, with Troy in second position now, uh, going once again, the top two in the Silver Championship. At this moment in time, I was uh, very much, uh, I was getting very excited about the uh, Championship bottle. And Steve then having a very, once again, a solid third position. Red Bull having a great race there with Wilson there, who, um, once again, he, he's uh, not a very good qualifier, is he, Wilson? As if you don't want me saying, but my my goodness me, his race craft is second to none. Fantastic, so indeed. Then Ayrton coming from at 19th to 7th there, when one of his strongest races of the season. A really good stuff, indeed. Then Baz in at 9th position there, with Curly in 10th position. Diashi heartbreakingly just outside the uh, top 10 there. And um, yes, uh, I remember that it was. Um, Quite a, a somber note, wasn't it, after that, um, for Diashi, as they were just going through the um, DNF as well. And, um, well, um, that was a great uh, Dutch Grand Prix, I must say. Then a gamer there who leads the uh, championship by uh, 34 points then from uh, Troy in a second, then. But uh, the top two are now in a league of their own. Steve has moved on to a third position, a fantastic start. Um, as we've also got Nigel and Bradfield who are climbing up the order as well. Nigel, of course, having a bit of a difficult start there um, in, the, uh, in the silver division, unfortunately. And in the um, Constructor Championship, unfortunately, Racing point is still on zero points. Uh, Mercedes have got a 26 point lead over Renault at the moment. Red Bull in a very solid third position. Moment. Williams dropping like a stone after that um, appalling race. There. We go on to Monaco and um, TK getting his first air pole position then in the uh, in uh, ALR Silver then. And uh, Nolsey, you know a lot about pole positions in Monaco. Then how difficult is it to um, how difficult is it to get a lap up in this very difficult uh, principality, uh, the jewel of the crown of Formula One. Well, like you said, it's the jewel of the crowd. I think it's the one that you, you want to win. You want to get pole as well, obviously, because it's, um, like I said earlier, it's so difficult to overtake round here that um, if you get pole, you've got odds on a good chance to win the race as well. And obviously, safety cars and things like that come in and play a factor, of course, on that. But, um, yeah, I think it's um, like we've got them right now. But, um, yeah, I think TK was probably relishing um, relishing the chance to uh, to get a win here as well. With his um, with his pace that he's got around here, it looked like um, so. Yeah, it was um, oh, it was good to have uh, TK coming in um, and proving uh, proving that he's got the pace to uh, to maybe get some wins and potentially uh, carry that forward to next season as well. And I think the TK then, of course, um, at the beginning of his uh, LR career, he was a, a super sub, wasn't he? So um, he was dipping in and out then. But um, I think that it, uh, I think it was the next race or the race after in Canada or France, if I'm not very much mistaken, where he becomes a full-time driver. But unfortunately, he had damaged the nose, didn't he? So um, uh, it's a 50% job done, isn't it? Where you go on pole position in Monaco. Unfortunately, you just have to keep your uh, cool, don't you? Gordo is taking the lead of the Grand Prix at the moment now, uh, and so Gordo leads then. And um, I must say that he's very inexperienced in LR. But he does show that um, he does show that he's a uh, very uh, he's got a wise head on young shoulders. Unfortunately, I've said that at the wrong time because he's just damaged the nose cone as he comes into the pits. Then, but um, I do not retract my statement whatsoever because he has had a magnificent se uh, season. And as we've got Troy now um, leading the Grand Prix, um, good stuff indeed there for Troy. Then Gamer, unfortunately, not in this Grand Prix. Then and uh, Troy, there very much uh, was it. It's a Grand Prix where you can really assert your dominance uh, in the World Championship as well. Um, Alex, then of course you was involved in the. Uh, Championship charge there in the opening six, uh, seven rounds of gold. Uh, how is how difficult is it then um, to uh, keep an eye on your championship challenger whilst also drawing your own race? Can you do it? Um, well, you have to. Um, I think it's, it's the only way you can you can keep going and get some get some points. I mean, I uh, um, I had um, 
the opportunity just to just to, I was just there I think and at the right time to get some points against Emerson um, in gold obviously last or this season just gone but uh, yeah it was a it was nice nice feeling winning round uh, winning round here um, so yeah I think um, it, like like I said earlier you want to win you want to win round in Monaco it's just a it's just a it's well it's the sort of culture of it the, the sort of expectation of it and the history of it um, that, that sort of comes with well, comes with the win if you if you like. It's not just a win round any ordinary F1 circuit, and so it it really does it sort of means something. It's especially in uh, in real life, but in the game as well. It's just it's a bit of fun to, uh, uh, especially for me when uh, when I beat Emerson. So um, no, it's it's really good to watch, mm. and I think the I think the reason why we're watching the Monaco race in 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 silver as well is because um, it was a really good race in this in this um, in this season as well because everybody. Did a good job. I mean, it was it's a difficult circuit to try. We've got 39 laps around here. It's it's concentration at max for 39 laps of of it, um, making sure that you stay out of those walls. Of course, some people have had a few bumps and scrapes, but um, the reason we're watching it is because it was an exceptional race from Silver this season. And um, I think that it it just shows in in all of the races that Silver have had the the sort of consistency, the the pace and the actual skill skill gap between P1 and P2 or P1 and P20 sorry is um is so so close uh, that it's um, just exceptional to watch as we've got a bit of a coming together between uh, between Wilson and Bradfield the two friends there who've um, had a bit of a problem going into uh, the hairpin yeah, I think that something must have been untoward said about that. It's um, going down into the Lowe's hairpin. And that was the, believe it or not, after 36 laps, that was the first DNF of Monaco. That is unheard of, isn't it? Um, especially in league races. As we've got TK there uh, pointing the wrong way, then his uh, dream turned into a nightmare, didn't it? Unfortunately, within an hour after getting out of his first pole position of his career as well. Uh, Sean Hammer's doing a great job as well in this Grand Prix. Fantastic 7 beat there for Sean Hammer's there. And uh, of course, uh, we're home. And hopefully, uh, Sean Hammer's will come back to LR in the not too distant future we just got Gordo there coming through into a I think that was his best result of his career right, at this uh, moment in time then Troy winning the Grand Prix fantastic stuff indeed there and um, well I gotta say um, is um, pole position king around here or is track position king around here well it doesn't look like from qualifying once again but um, and that's because uh, that's exactly what Knowles he said though wasn't it really uh, it's so close uh, between first and 20th position there that um, if any other league uh, uh, track uh, qualifying is important but in silver it definitely isn't is it there because anything can up and there it's all about strategy overcuts undercuts and all that kind of stuff isn't it um and that's why sean hammers um elevated himself into fifth position bullet that was his best result of his career and of the season as well with a strong sixth position there both for Haas uh, cars did a great job that day very good stuff indeed there uh, so we're just looking at the um uh, final classification as well only um that was very impressive there i think we only had uh, one retirement in the whole of the monica grand prix it's just ridiculous and that was the first time that troy has taken the lead in his uh, in his career in a championship scenario in a are and uh, my goodness me that was fantastic wasn't it and you can see Gordo elevating himself at three positions as well Billet also getting out of the relegation zone as well Roscoe is the first driver then to get minus points then in ALR unfortunately that's a um, that's a uh, stat that you do really want to know about was it uh, Mercedes then and Renault are now tied at the top of the constructors then 74 points in front of Red Bull in third position Ferrari going up into a uh, fourth position as well as so we jump from uh, Monaco to Hungary well um, they do say that Hungary is kind of Monaco without the barriers or they used to I kind of... Oh, gosh, there has got a racing point into the bar already of BP. Unfortunately, that wasn't a very good start there from a BP's point of view. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is... Um, but Alex said you was talking about how much you liked Hungary. Uh, sorry, how much you liked uh, Monaco. Is uh, Hungary the same track for you, then? Do you enjoy Hungary? Because uh, it is technical and twisty, then. Or am I just... Um, or am I completely wrong here? Um, I, yeah, I don't mind Hungary. Great overtake there. Just, just, uh, I'm just watching now of Curly Red. Oh, there's a bit of contact from Wolf Madonado. Uh, but... Um, yeah, I think, like you said, it is a, it is a technical circuit uh, similar to Monaco. Obviously, a uh, bit bit more um, bit more runoff, bit more um, sort of um, area to to uh, cause a not cause an incident, but go wrong and recover, if you will. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I really like the track. I think that it's again, it's a track that's been traditionally uh, on the calendar as well. So it's um, it's nice to race around here. And I think if if you avoid the dreaded curves of death and um, avoid people going into the back of you as we've seen there twice in the uh, chicane um it's uh, it's a really good track to race on as well it's uh, like i said it's a very close track so um the wheel to wheel sort of um 
ability is uh, really tested around here. But again, in silver, I think that we've seen, although we've had incidents, it seems that the ability of wheel-to-wheel -wheel sort of racing um, has improved definitely from the previous seasons as well. It has indeed, does now. I've got to say, um, this class of silver is the best class of silver we've had in all three seasons, in my uh, humble opinion. Where, um, and so just as soon as I say that, we get far from the screen as well, so no one will believe me anymore. <laughs> of course, I'm joking oh about that one. Um, but uh, he's having a great old battle there with himself and TK. And I must say, I quite enjoy watching Far Racer, to be fair, though, because he is very, he's not shy of getting his elbows out, is he? I absolutely love it. As we're just watching, um, I think that that's Jake Desaire, who uh, made, I think this is for debut with the Mercedes team, and so it's great to see uh, Jake to say and young tommy come in as well two drivers which um i am looking forward to seeing what them two can do in a full season in the lr next season um goodness me then but um i haven't said that then they weren't shot of getting our elbows out either good gracious me um but uh, my goodness me um but yeah young tommy and jake to is two drivers and i'm really invested in for next season that is a um well that's a fact really isn't it here comes gamer then who has got a lot of um pressure now because nigel at the start of the season then i think that um nigel was um i think he was just finding his feet was in silver but the second half of the season he really elevated himself doing a magnificent job there and once again he is really putting pressure on gamer as young tommy goes past tk and up into ninth position there we have also got uh, wilson there who also dives down the inside on those soft tires as well look at that wilson there steaming through like a freight train there and on the outside into turn two magnificent stuff there from the red bull dryer well that was beautifully done there gamer take um i think this was actually gamer's last grand prix win of the um silver season if i'm not very much mistaken uh, now i've said that i think i'm wrong but um we'll but uh, hopefully it's not on this uh, re review a uh, new potato in second position now a uh, new potato i can't believe it it's only um, ever had one win um, up to this point in at silver as well nundo of course i think that this is a one-off drive for nundo was it in a great third position as well troy the championship leader in fourth and nigel um he had some strong race in the second half of the season you'll see in the championship in a minute how far up he's come serious much in a strong sixth position gordo his um i think that uh it's starting a lot that he's only ever dnf'd in two grand prix in his career i'm gonna ask alex about uh, how difficult that is at the minute because um i must say i i bow down to gordo because it's very difficult to finish a league race then uh, so very uh, hats off to him indeed then as we're just uh, going down then to the um bottom of the classification as well as a couple of drivers there unfortunately not making it to the uh, checker flag then i'll say a couple only one driver again then uh, only one dnf in hungary and monaco that is unheard of isn't it a uh, gamer almost 60 points behind at uh, beyond troy now look at that nigel's gone from 11th i think we last seen him up into fourth position there wilson moving himself up into sixth then and that relegation zone uh, getting very um getting very feisty then with young tommy uh bullets and Ayrton in there at the moment there. slayer just about out of it and of course they're uh, far from 16th position then in the constructors championship uh, renault leading 55 points in front of the Mercedes team. Only other change then is the Williams team. It's got in front of the McLaren team then. Uh, now you can see Racing Point have got 94 points since the last time we spoke about them. On to the good old USA then. And um, of course in Circuit of the Americas. Uh, but um, Alex, I think I was going to chat to you about the lack of DNFs then that Gordo has had over the course of his career. Um, I must say, um, I find it very difficult to get to the end of the race, especially when you've had a difficult race indeed. But uh, oh gosh then, is uh, well, that underlines then about far trying to get his elbows out there. Unfortunately, him and TK have come to blows again there i've got to say um getting very friendly with each other but uh yeah about the um, about uh, how you get to the end then um that's pretty impressive isn't it with the lack of dnfs that gordo's had yeah i mean that's well i just credit to him it shows why he's so high up in the championship because he's kept it consistent and kept it clean in the races and not had uh, and scored those points even when he might have had a bad race he's still um he's still in the race to get some points um and that's what you need to do you need to you need to finish the race to get some points and uh and uh, he, he's done that this season consistently, and I think it's been um, it's, it's been he's been really clever when he's been racing. I think he's show he showed that in most of the races that he's done is that um, he's picked his he's picked his fights. He's he's let people through when he needs to let people through. Uh, he might be on a different strategy. He's not racing the person that he's he, that's overtaking him. So he he will he he's got a cool head, and like you said, he's he's got a, a an old head on young shoulders sort of thing. Like um, what you said earlier that. He's uh, a wise head on old, on young shoulders. Sorry, um, but um, so he, he knows how to he knows how to do the strategy, how to control the car, make sure that he can get to the finish line, um, and all he needs to do is make sure that um, he can do it quickly, and he does that as well. So um, he's got the he got, he's got the strategy in hand, he's got the pace, um, and he picks his battles. He's consistent. Um, so you see some people here who will or in league racing as a whole will go for a, go for a dive bomb go for a move it will end their race because 
the, the opportunity just wasn't there as we've got somebody uh, missing the pit, en pit entry. Um, I thought I'd get that in there for Jake. There, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, uh, yeah, unlucky for Jake there. But um, yeah, so you see people going for, for moves where the chance is 50-50 or even less in their favour. Gordo picks his movements, I think, and he'll he'll go for a move when he's when he's got the got the ERS, got the DRS, and he's got everything lined up to make an easy pass, um, and that way he gets through without having to make those uh, sort of um, well niggly incidents where it go where it go where it can go wrong. And I think he's proved that he can he's proved that he can take it to uh, to anybody really in, in this in the league in silver. Uh, so I, I think we'll hopefully see him getting some wins in in the near future. And talking of wins, he should have got, uh, I think he should have got a possibly a potential win in Canada and in Italy as well. Um, we've skipped over Canada and Italy, but um, of course, Welsh Marnado, who came up from bronze to silver, won um, won her first ever Grand Prix on International Women's Day as well. Goodness me, that was incredible, that was, wasn't it? And Ayrton there um, tamed the wet condition in the Italian Grand Prix to win his first uh, ever Grand Prix as well. But unfortunately, Ayrton there, who I think he uh, uh, spoke about a stat earlier on, um, about uh, he was the first driver to get a Grand Prix win and still get relegated then. So that's a start that he probably uh, wants to um, bury, really, doesn't he, um, as he goes into bronze next season. That's a great move there by um, Nigel and Bards, and goodness me, uh, Nigel very much um, loving uh, those uh, new soft tyres. Uh, Troy, once again, out on the lead then, and um, I think that uh, at this moment in time, Troy was uh, was started to, well, starting to really rack up the Grand Prix wins. I think he got 12 in the end in uh, in um, Silver's uh, season, then, which is the most in uh, ALR Silver's history then. And goodness me, we thought, we remember how good Glock was, and Ayrton doing a beautiful move there, fantastic stuff down the back straight we remember how good glock was in season one there but um he had 11 grand prix wins there but troy had 12 grand prix wins and uh at this moment in time uh Nolsey, he really was starting to rack him up wasn't he and um in, in the latter half of the season really impressive stuff yeah it just shows that um he has got he's got that mentality that he's a he's a winner so um he's done a great job this season i think uh, he had the competition there, um, as we saw earlier on in the season with Gamer um, and everybody else. I mean, I think uh, other people have chipped in with a few wins here and there as well. So um, it just shows that Hattori has had to be on his A game pretty much for the whole season for all 22 races. Um, and he's pulled off the resu results. He's got the wins um, pretty consistently. Well, he's uh, just over, well, over half of the wins throughout the season. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's credit to him. He's um, He's just... He's got the got his head on, and he's just gone for it. And he's um yeah he's, he deserves he deserves the drivers' title, um as do uh, all the all the winners from every from every league this season. But uh, I think Troy especially is he's come in he's he had a few races in the previous season and it didn't really go well for him. He he was sort of getting to grips with the league I think and and getting getting to grips with his other drive with fellow drivers. But um yeah this season it's just been a completely different person and. Uh, um, yeah, it fully deserved to him and, uh, and uh, hats off to him. Well done. And underline your point there, uh, Alex, as well. We've got six Grand Prix winners in this Grand Prix alone. Out of 17 starters, six of them of Grand Prix winners. That is absolutely ridiculous, that as well. Of course, there, um, uh, this silver season as well, we'll let's underline the British Grand Prix where uh, Farf won his first Grand Prix in over a year. I think his last Grand Prix win was actually in Bahrain season two of ALR Gold as um, two Alpha, <laughs> male, uh, Alpha Tauris are getting to, uh, get to a blows there. Unfortunately, Ayrton, that was your fault, my good man. Um, <laughs> But um, then we've also got uh, Nigel getting his first Grand Prix win in well over two seasons, I think it was. Uh, his last Grand Prix win is, um, we've just seen Gamer getting a bit squirrely there out of the exit of turn 21. Um, we also got Nigel win his first uh, uh, first Grand Prix of silver in his silver career, I should say. Uh, so, oh gosh, there is action galore all of a sudden then when I'm starting to get the old stat book out. Uh, but um, And then, of course, they won the Belgian Grand Prix, didn't he, in that uh, silver there. I've got to say, that was the last Grand that was the last one where he won a Grand Prix in gold. And then he came back in silver and won it in fine start as well and there is Nigel at the moment as um, he was limping on with those very uh, ward soft tires and TK was all over the back of him as well and look at that then um, that is uh, night and day is it between those uh, soft and medium tires uh, that is uh, where you become from a hero to zero then doesn't it really and look at that he's also got a puncture as well um, just pushing those soft tires just too far unfortunately for Nigel Troy there wins another Grand Prix doesn't he as um, he is on top of the podium and uh, I think that when we were talking about our favourites at the beginning 
begin the season. Troy was not um, no disrespect to Troy, but uh, he was not the forefront of my um, of my like little list I always pull up at the beginning of the season. Uh, so um, yeah, we was talking about the uh, likes of uh, Nigel, and I've, I even threw serious I threw serious mushroom in there as well because uh, serious mushroom there won the Grand Prix in Japan last season, didn't he? And uh, he was very much uh, Mr. Consistency as well. But I think that uh, it just shows that Troy can beat the likes of serious mushroom, uh, FIFA Beefy, and um, and uh, Curly and Co. And uh, it's just it's absolutely testament to his skill and a skill level. Very good stuff indeed then. Uh, so we're just looking down to the... Um uh, back uh, down to the bottom classification there as well, uh, and uh, we've seen in which we got um, only 17 stars in that Grand Prix, but it wasn't about quantity, it was about quality, I absolutely, and that's what is on this uh, season review, I absolutely love that race um, absolutely magical stuff indeed then uh, just looking at the championship now, Troy was also confirmed the world champion there a fantastic performance, 154 points in front of Gamer in the end and Nigel elevated himself in the third position as well, just in front of New Potato as he's dropping off slightly, and you can see young Tommy also getting himself out of that relegation so with a brilliant performance there. You see, um, Steve was in the top three, wasn't he, at the beginning of the season? Dropping all the way down to 16th and having a bit of a difficult time then. Renault have also uh, really um, stamped their authority on the Constructors' Championship as well. Alfa Romeo moved up to fourth position. Racing point then. No points after the first uh, five, six, seven rounds then. And all of a sudden, they was back in the fifth position. As we come on to the final Grand Prix of the season, as um, my tower on the left-hand side always jumps up and down there. Far it's not leaning at the moment. It's uh, Troy. But um, I think that this is a good opportunity, Alex, uh, just to uh, just have a quick uh, chat about how um, uh, how silver season three has been overall for you then from an expert's point of view no i wouldn't say i wouldn't say that but as i'd say it's been a great season i know um there's been some a few changes with the drivers and things like that and uh, and things like that as, as we've got Favre just pushing his way through uh, being the bully that he is on track um so um yeah it's been a great season i think it's been the best season so far for silver um, and it's been uh, a really good, really good league to have to have on for the 22 weeks that it's been racing as well. So, I mean, it's credit to all the guys who've been racing in uh, in silver, uh, all the reserves who've who've helped out as well. I mean, everyone's done a fantastic job to keep these races going on, and uh, and it's been a pleasure to watch. I think, and 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 silver's uh, silver's always been uh, ever, even since season one. I think it's always been a consistent league, and I think the gap. The, the gap between the drivers in this league uh, in, season, in season three was the closest it's ever been in this league uh, and I think in, in all ALR leagues as well um, this season I think it was the closest league um, you can see that in the qualifying times and things like that as well the gaps just aren't there they don't exist I think it's, it's sort of tenths between people instead of seconds and things like that so um, it's been really close racing, um, and it's it, like I said, it's been a pleasure to watch. And uh, yeah, credit to uh, credit to all 20 drivers and all, everybody else who's uh, taken part this season. That was beautifully summed up, uh, and I must say, um, also, uh, having Silver on a Monday is an absolute pleasure, isn't it, Because it starts off the week just right, doesn't it? Uh, Nigel and the Curly there uh, going out wheel to wheel as well. I'm going to miss uh, Nigel and Curly having their battles, especially towards the end of the season. I've got to say, I, both of them are very aggressive. Uh, I've got uh, Curly is one of the most aggressive overtakers in all of the um, in um, all of the um, all the competitors. Then, but um, I must say, it does. It looks absolutely beautiful on the stream. It's a uh, far fair. Had a bit of a nightmare end to his um, Silver campaign. Then, as of course, it's the first time in Farf's history, where he's uh, not driving in gold then as well, so hats off to Farfair for giving up his seat in gold, fantastic stuff indeed there, and I think um, I think he had, of course, he had a Grand Prix win in, um, in uh, the British Grand Prix, oh gosh, I forgot about that, uh, British Grand Prix is uh, him in that staircase, the blows. Oh dear, oh dear. I, I, I think I've covered for I've a lot of glory, haven't I, in um, this uh, highlights reel. Uh, but um, uh, but fair enough. sums up far if it's that. It's just brilliant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he, he has brilliant races in Silverstone, and unfortunately, he does uh, seem to have a couple of uh, a couple of scares here and there. But I think the far is going to be a top of my list then for the championship favourite for next season. I would um, I would say then, uh, as we're here in Abu Dhabi then for the final race of the season. And look at this then, is uh, Farham, of course, one of the reserve drivers. And I am really looking forward to seeing what. Uh, some of our new reserve drivers can do next season. There's another driver that I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do is Pyro as well. I love that. Uh, I love that driver. He's fantastic in this race, wasn't he? And you can see then Gordo Maldonado in FIFA beefy there, very much getting their elbows out. there. they have been, um, you know, I've got to say, they have been um, the stars of the show, aren't they? The midfield have. They've been really good. Troy has been fantastic, hasn't he? But um, when Troy is um, uh, having an easy race like he is in Abu Dhabi at the moment, he's four seconds in front of uh, TK. Uh, the midfield have just kept me so much on my toes then. And as 
Alex said then, um, it's thousands, it's hundreds, it's thousands of a second there. Unfortunately for me, who doesn't really notice anything like that, I, uh, <laughs> I can't say it's quite difficult for me to, um, quite difficult for me to um, tell what is going on. It's absolutely brilliant, isn't it? And then look at them, they're having more fights, aren't they? Even at the end of the season then, well, you think there's not much to play for, is there? But there is a lot to play for. There's still about pride, isn't there? And there's a couple of championships up for, um, a couple of championship positions up for debate as well, wasn't there? Uh, Pyro then is stepping in up for, um, stepping in for the Haas team later on this, uh, uh, for this final race of the season as well. Is that Curly? Then? Look at that. <laughs> what I mean, that was centimeters between Ayrton and Curly. That is ridiculously close indeed then. Um, looking forward to uh, season four, um, Alex said. What are, you, what are you most excited about for Silver? I think it's um, wait, potentially it's on, on a new game, of course, because we'll so have to find out what the new game's like as well um, and how these guys progress on that as well. But um, potentially it could be even better. I'm, I'm looking forward to Silver because it's always, um, like I said, it's always a close league. I think when you said earlier um, about about the hundreds and the thousands and, and things like that, it was, um, um, I was just going to say, I was just thinking as you said that, that probably um, P4 down to P20, um, probably could have been in, uh, probably could have switched, switched positions at any point in this season. Um, the guys lower down the table probably had, if they had a bit more luck, they probably could be in, in the top half of the table, that sort of thing. So it's been that close of a season that people have been unlucky in some cases where they've ended up in the relegation zone uh, where they potentially could have been um, miles higher. So it's it's been that close that it's been a, just a, min, a, a, a spectacle to watch every race. Um, and absolutely fantastic. And I think next season is going to be um, the first first few races. I think initially we'll be getting used to the game. Um, there'll be differences, obviously, to this game that everyone has to get used to. Like for example, at the beginning of this game of 2020, we had the track limits that were completely different to 2019. So we'll have similarities with that. And probably the damage model and things like that will come into it as well. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a great season, no doubt, um, on in Silver Season Four, and um, looking forward to getting started in uh, in July on F1 2020 or 2021. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's going to be on for me to say 2021. I'm going to probably get that wrong a lot of times. <laughs> and Troy there winning his 12th Grand Prix win. I think that was his fifth Grand Prix win in the row as well. He absolutely dominated the final um, finals end of that uh, Silver Season. Fantastic stuff indeed. TK getting a strong end there as well. There, as uh, frankly, he changed his name to a lot shorter as well. There just to help me out. Good stuff indeed. Pyro on his debut in third position so I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, to seeing him back in action in ALR next season uh, Welsh Manado in a strong fourth with Curly in fifth position um, those two keep an eye on those two next season I think that they will definitely be in the uh, promotion uh, conversation I um, have no doubt about that Steve having a very strong end to his um, a silver season there after to be honest uh, it was pretty appalling in the mid stages there wasn't it but Steve there doing a very good job there to finish off his uh, season as well then and unfortunately this uh, race there uh, kind of effectively ended Ayrton Baz's and Bullet's uh, uh, journey in silver for the time being and I think it is a goodbye not farewell isn't it to those drivers and so we'll see them but we'll be seeing those drivers in bronze for next season thank you to Alex and for joining me on this fantastic season we really enjoyed that as well there are the final classifications Troy A, uh, Nigel and Gamer promotion fantastic some deep new potato 30 points off in the end unfortunately and uh, there it is and Ayrton Baz and Bullet unfortunately have dropped down in uh, to the bottom three as well and just for a final look at the, uh, the Constructors Championship Renault RD Constructors Directors World Champions, the final race in that silver before they become LP next season. Mercedes second, Ferrari in third position. Up next is the awards then for silver. Enjoy.
into uh, oh, he's up into a uh, fifth position now yes now Troy is going to be the third ever silver champion he's out of final turn and Troy is the world champion of ALR silver he has done it with four races to go a magnificent performance there from Troy he is the world champion of ALR silver